Hi everyone. I would like to take this opportunity to talk about Chords of Attachment, Past Life, Twin Flame. If you want to know more, so keep your ears open. mysteries in life, and we have a lot of questions, we ask ourselves. It takes much time, and effort to delve into. Well, let's see if we can unlock them, at least in part, and explore. So, start here the journey into their depths. Somewhere, in this universe, there's a place, where time gaps are connected. The idea of karma, is based on everything in the universe, has a cause. The laws of the universe, are irrevocable, and cannot be ignored without invoking it. Certain people, might have more of a karmic connection with others. The reason why, you have cords of attachment with someone, and also had a past life together. It allows for the exchange of energy between yourself, and, another person. They freely allow this exchange of energy, unless a boundary is established. Sometimes, in this world, there are many connections are invisible. It is as if they do not exist, because they are outside the range of your perception. But, until you experience directly. So, you can feel in a very vivid way inside of you. Though, it may seem like we are independent from one another, we are all linked through invisible bonds. People can also attach, long distance, and without ever meeting you. If there is an unhealthy amount of time, and energy dedicated to thinking about you, or sending energy your way, they can make an attachment, if you're at a lower vibration, and energetic state that matches theirs. That is what is called, as you will have guessed, cords of attachment. In first, it's like a telephone wire. Each other is connected to this same wire, and you can even get some informations about another person, with who you have cords of attachment. How? Because your energy is a part of his or hers. Sometimes, it's so vivid, that your connection is into fifth dimension. Well, you can sense certain details of his or her life. And they can be important. Maybe a karmic issue must be resolved. It is possible you're the key to this issue. A sort of job to do. However, only you must experience this for yourself. The plasticity of the cords, varies, and will have a different, thickness based on how much energy is exchanged, or drawn from. The thicker the, cords, the more emotional energy that has been expended. Cords, can also be created unintentionally via relationships and exchanges. When we, form an emotional attachment with a situation, or person, a cord is birthed. Sometimes, they are intentional, or they aren't. Perhaps, 
you have severed ties with someone and they don't feel the same way, they may try to hold onto you or your attention in some capacity, further creating a cord. They can also drain us or create fear-based energy patterns just by their interaction and intentions. Do you ever feel drained for no reason? Or incredibly sensitive, anxious, or emotional without anything specific to trigger it? Maybe, that person is fills up with bad energy and you can feel it. You could have an unhealthy cord with that individual, or they may have attached one to you, drawing from your well of energy, and leaving you with their parting gift of anxiety, and other limiting energetic patterns. Courting is all about addressing these emotional connections and about personal empowerment for the individuals on both ends of the cord. Symptoms of energy cords and out of control emotions. If you aren't typically emotional, or if the emotions you're experiencing, you can't relate to, there is a high likelihood that these are someone else's emotions you've internalized via cords. The reason why I talked about bad energy. If you're experiencing a lot of highs, lows, and you can't connect with the nature behind these fleets, examine where these ships could be stemming from outside yourself. If they are indeed the result of a cord, when you identify them, you will often notice that the emotional presence subsides very quickly. Remember that a big part of this process is awareness and identifying the nature and source of cords. Low vibe states. If you're someone whom is typically upbeat and energetic but find yourself low and pessimistic, it is important to examine this resistance. Is it yours or someone else's? Whose pants does this energy belong in? These cords need to be cleared from you in order to preserve your own energy body. Even strangers can create cords or hooks with you. For example, on social media. Be careful because you can create cords when you interact with someone online. Anyway, cords will grow back, especially if it is with someone that you are often in contact. They are a natural process, but when they become too many, they drain energy and can lower your vibration. Try to create mental distance in your mind and distance yourself from that person in reality or on web. You'll feel better. These cords are not on your conscious level, but exist at the subconscious and unconscious levels. Despite the fact that you cannot see or feel them with the naked eye, they still have the ability to greatly affect your life. Let's talk about karmic cords. What are karmic cords? They are the invisible links that we attach to people, situations, etc., which can be emotional or mental. They are formed through conscious and subconscious vows, contracts, promises, and oaths. There are good cords and bad cords. These invisible cords that keep us in low frequency relationship cycles and keep us attracted to drama and situations, places, which are just no good for us. They can allow the energy to be drained from your emotional body. Maybe, it is high time to clear some relationships karmic baggage from the past or still present in your life. Because a painful breakup is always on your mind. It is time to resolve this karmic issue.
Each carries a unique energy signature that can form spiritual connections or chords. Keeping the relational dynamic in mind, it helps to think of energy chords as an open energetic channel of emotional communication. Depending on the nature of the relationship, the emotions you receive from the other may impact you positively, negatively or even neutrally. It can be intrusive at the conscious level. According to Dorita Raidlingice, co-founder of Skinesiology Vibrational Skincare, when the relationship between you and the other person is not equal or reciprocal, it becomes an intrusive presence, creating a lower vibration, leaving energy blockages in your energy field. What do energy cords look like? Chords are seen psychically, in the mind's eye, and how they intuitively appear, may be symbolic, speaking to the subtleties of the relationship's emotional effects. Chords, can feel like thick. They are like metal chain link. It involves the chakras, our energy centers. In a particularly vivid instance, a highly controlling individual, sent cords to the major joints on the victim's body. How do we remove cords? It is definitely possible but you will need the aid of a skilled healer for supporting completely severing the cord, and healing the wound. It is especially difficult to remove yourself. However, ritual can help you raise your vibration, such that you can transcend the patterns of behavior that perpetuate the cord's corresponding relational dynamic. In a way, it is as if the higher vibration of energy evolves the relationship or your role within it to a state that is no longer damaging. A method of cord cutting, is a visualization exercise, in which our cords are pictured, and detached in the mind's eye. There are four basic kinds of cords. The ones you throw because you are trying to help them. The ones they grab at you with to get something from you. The ones you throw because you feel overwhelmed and hurt by them. The ones they throw at you because they have been. Take a moment to clarify which kind you have. First, it is important to align your energy with the task, by stating clearly that you want a Deckard, that you want your energy back, and that you'll no longer tolerate being drained by others. Become clear about any hidden assumption, that says you need to rescue others, at the expense of your own well-being. Once you're completely cleared of cords, you'll experience more directly that it is not helpful or healthy for either of you. This will establish your intention and your system will begin loosening the locks on the cords and supporting your process. It will be helpful, if you can suspend any disbelief you might have about cords existence, much less your being able to perceive them, and use your intention to become aware of the energy, that you have invested in your problem person, and, or that they have tied to you. Settle into yourself, by taking three deep breaths into your abdomen. Ground and center. Let go of all outside concerns. Become, as aware of your body as possible. Move down into your core, into the back of your legs to your feet, through the fullness of your torso, into your shoulders, arms, and hands, up your back into your neck, and head.
Walking through the inside of your body, pay special attention to any areas that are tight, that you tend to skip over. Take a moment to stop, and be in that area, without trying to change it. Just be next to it, and then, gently ask your energy, light, or warmth, to move into that place. Intend that the energy move in enough, that you are awake in that part of yourself, as well as in the easier places. Become more settled into living inside your own body. Now, picture a person you feel stuck, and conflicted about or other. In your mind's eye, place them out in front of you. Depending on, the history you have with them, you may see them looking at you, from their usual helpless, hurt, accusing or condemning eyes, or acting, as if you owe them, or as if they own you. Imagine, that their tie to you, is a cord from their first chakra, at the base of their spine to you. It usually, will land somewhere in your first chakra area, but not always. Just take what you get. How it is attached? It's like a fish hook. Imagine yourself unhooking, or just gently tugging it out of you. Feel the energy within the cord, as palpable, and send it back toward the other person. Use shooing motions, with your hands, if you want, as if you are brushing crumbs off your lap, and keep that energy moving all the way out of your extended space, your public space. Sense it retracting into the distance. It is not your job to force the person to reclaim their energy. You don't have to re-engage with them to that extent. In fact, it is better if you don't. It is their responsibility to deal with their own energy, and with their own actions. It's only your job to sweep out your own space. Stay grounded as you do this, so you stay in your body, and don't get too involved in the energy as it goes. Now, check their second chakra. Imagine a cord from about one, and one half inches, below their navel to you. Unlatch it from you, and send it away. Remember, that you're not responsible for getting them to take it back all the way, only for getting it out of your space. So, feel your aura out to the further edge. Being conscious of occupying your own space, helps get it out. Now, sense a cord from their solar plexus, diaphragm area, third chakra, to you. Unhook it from you, and insist on its moving out, and away towards them. Intend, that it go all the way out of your extended space, so it disappears into the distance toward them. Notice, how your energy feels without it, having your energy in your own sphere unimpeded by theirs. Then, try the eighth, one aspect of which, has to do with boundaries, is at the hollows in front of the shoulders, below the collarbone. Unplug their cords, from your field, and insist on their energy moving out of your space. Then, close your eyes again, if you've opened them, and breathe into your stomach and hips. Check in, with your body, and let it settle for a moment, without those cords draining you. Now, send your awareness down to your first chakra area, at the bottom of your torso, and imagine that your investment in you problem person, whether from worry, or feeling assaulted, is also a cord, and your survival energy is affected.
Notice, how the conflict between you, has been siphoning energy, to them that you can't afford to waste. When you pull in your own cords, and bring your energy back into your own sphere, you will actually be more energized, and more fully present within yourself, and with other person, if you choose to be. Insist that it return. Unhook your cord from them, and see yourself reeling it back, toward you, as if it's a fishing line, or a hose on a reel. As it comes toward you, remind yourself, that it is made of your own energy, even if it has spent quite a while away from home. It is not the other person's energy. It is not something dangerous anyway. As it comes toward you, take a deep breath into the center of your pelvic bowl. Make sure, you breathe all the way to the back, and exhale down your legs into your feet. People have a tendency to stop, when the energy has reached their skin in the front. It belongs, melted into the energy system inside, so invite it all the way in. Once the first, one feels completely reintegrated, imagine that you have a core to your conflict person from your second chakra, below your navel, to them. Unhook it, from them, and invite the energy back with some insistence. Allow whatever you become aware of emotionally, just to be there as you reel it in. Breathe into the back of your sacrum, and let it rejoin your energy system. Now, imagine there's a cord, from your solar plexus level to them. Unhook it, from them, and insist it come home. There's nothing wrong with using your hands and gathering gestures. Gently, insist that it come in through the space in front of you, and then, let it settle. Take a deep breath up, and down your spine. Continue on with fourth, at the level of your heart, the fifth just above the base of your throat, and then, eighth, in front of your shoulders, and below your collarbone. To keep chords from occurring in the future, with practice, you can keep yourself from being corded in the future, and cut down on your tendency to cord. The more you clear cords, the more you'll be able to recognize the feeling of wholeness, that occurs when your system is free of such quagmires. You will also find yourself, noticing more readily, when they've happened again, and be able to decord, before any lasting problematic patterns, are set up, or you feel. What will we experience after removing a cord? Some, notice a feeling of lightness inside, and outside of their bodies. You feel free, and better again. If you constantly dream of someone, the most obvious explanation, is maybe that you share a spiritual connection with the person, you are always dreaming about. The reason also why, you have cords of attachment. Or that he or she is your twin flame. 
On the spiritual plane, which most of us most often access through dreams, spiritual connections are laid bare, and become clearer as the restraints of the physical world, do not hamper them. What is likely to be happening, is that the person you are constantly dreaming about, is preoccupied with thoughts about you. It's called dreamscape telepathy. The spiritual connection becomes activated, and their energies reach out to you. This manifests, as intrusive thoughts, while awake, and as dreams while asleep. You can tell, what kind of thoughts they are having, about you by the nature of the dreams. If the dreams are happy, loving, or even romantic, then, these are likely the kind of thoughts, the person is having about you. On the other hand, anxious, and stressful dreams, can mean that they have some anxiety concerning you. Maybe also, you can feel how the person is, or anything was significant in his or hers life in the past, or present life. If you often dream about someone, your spirit guided try to send a message. You can't ignore easily. They can be a little cryptic. Part of the spiritual journey, is learning to hear the universe, and its energies, so we are rarely handed information on a plate. If you want, you can keep dream journal. Meditate on the messages contained within. Trust your intuition. It is your most important spiritual tool. We only get messages from our spirit guides, when we need them. Don't ignore these dreams. Some have a special message, while others are just the fragments of your thoughts, that you see during your sleep. What is the feeling in the dream? You wake up, and remember the same scene in your head with them. The feeling of the dream, or narrative, is your best clue at working out, why you keep dreaming of them. Usually, though if there is a message from them, the same scene will play, until you understand the meaning. If the feeling of the dream about someone keeps changing, then usually the dream is about you, but showing the meaning to you through them. If you see the same person, again and again, more than twice or thrice, then it is not possible to ignore. From a spiritual perspective, having dreams about the same person, means your souls are connecting. If the energy between you is bad, and the dream feels more like a nightmare, then you need to work on that resolve independently. You should keep, a keen eye on every detail, to decipher the message you have received from your unconscious mind. Like having the same dreams at night, is probably the sign, it's your twin flame. What does it mean when you dream about someone? Dreaming about someone, can be symbolic of something deeper within your subconscious. It often depends on, different factors, such as who is the person, and what's their relationship to you. You strongly feel like, you've been in the presence of another person. You strongly feel like, you've been in the presence of another person. You clearly remember their facial expressions, their tone of voice, the words they used, and you maybe even smelled their perfume. It could be that your unconscious mind, is trying to serve you an obvious, and essential message, that you'd be better off paying attention to. What does it mean, if you dream about someone repeatedly? How did you feel, when you dreamt about that person? Your feelings, are usually more important, than the person, when it comes to interpreting your dream. If your dreams are recurring, the feeling is vivid, 
there is certainly a strong connection between you, on a higher plane. Dreaming, is our primary gateway to the astral plane, where we can travel, using astral projection as our spiritual selves. It is on the astral plane, during sleep, that people most often, meet their twin flame for the first time. The spiritual connection between us, manifested as a silver cord on the astral plane, allows us to reunite with our twin flame far more efficiently, than we might be able to on the physical plane, especially if geography, is a primary obstacle to the relationship. When we enter a dream state, our spiritual selves project onto the astral plane, and seek out opportunities for growth, and discovery. Often, we seek out the same places, as our twin flame. The reasons for this, will become apparent. Our twin flame, is our partner along, with our spiritual journey, not just in this lifetime, but all previous, and subsequent to. We are mirror souls, and spiritual progress, is most easily, and profitably attained, while in contact with our twin flame. The twin souls, yearn for each other, as they grow in their desire for spiritual ascension. It pulls us together, on the physical plane, but it does so far more efficiently on the astral plane. This familiarization, with our twin flame on the astral plane, serves an essential purpose beyond spiritual progress. It helps us to learn about our twin flame, the journey, and goals that we share. Familiarity, is vital as at some point, we are going to meet our twin flame, and, although there are a great many signs, and symptoms of a twin flame meeting, we might not immediately know our twin flame, unless we are already familiar with their energies. This is the primary reason, why we meet with our twin flame, first through dreams before meeting them on the physical plane. All twin flames, need to progress adequately far along their spiritual journey. Meeting on the astral plane, lays the groundwork for the karmic lessons, we will learn later down the road. When you are feeling the presence of our twin flame in dreams, we should pay attention. Moodle dreaming. Is it possible? Mutual dreaming, is the concept that two, or more people, can actually share a dreamscape, or environment. In some ways, mutual dreaming, could be compared to living, this conscious reality, within a dream environment. Mutual dreaming, is also similar, to teleporting to different dimensions. It allows several people, 
to access the same dream environment. The connection between mutual and lucid dreaming. It does appear that there is a connection between mutual dreaming and lucid dreaming. Dreamers would have to master the concept of lucid dreaming in order to fully participate in a mutual dream. If you've ever had a lucid dream, then you understand that dreams are not always something that happens to you. With lucid dreaming, you can control what you experience in a dream environment. Experimenting with mutual dreaming. While mutual dreaming may not be a possibility at this moment, there are ways that you can experiment with the concept of sharing a dream environment with other people. Two of the most common ways to share dreams with others include meshing dreams and meeting dreams. Meshing dreams. It involves two or more individuals sharing a similar dream concept or experience. This experience can be either unarranged or prearranged. Oftentimes, with meshing dreams individuals are able to share dream details and find that they are very similar. Two or more individuals may end up talking about dreams they've had and through the conversation may discover that they both dreamed about the same thing. With a prearranged meshing dream, two or more individuals speak to each other about a specific event that they experienced prior to going to sleep. Usually upon waking, these individuals are able to share similar dream experiences. Meeting dreams. They are a bit more advanced. Where meshing dreams may be somewhat coincidental in regards to shared dream details, meeting dreams are often more detailed. With meeting dreams individuals decide to meet up within a dream environment and during the course of the dream share explicit information with each other. Twin Flame, what you need to know about that. These high-level, spiritual love connections do exist, but here's a pretty serious misunderstanding of what that means. Many people assume that a twin flame is the same thing as a romantic soulmate and use the terms interchangeably. But, these are entirely different things. They can also be completely platonic in nature. What is a twin flame? A twin flame is not your soulmate. It doesn't even have to be someone you fall in love with. This kind of high level soul based connection isn't about romance. It's about spiritual growth. It pushes you to want to engage with the divine shift consciousness, soulful being in this experience. It's like looking in a mirror. It can be really intense. Twin flame relationships aren't all smooth sailing, and actually, they're usually not. Being with a twin flame is like constantly being confronted by yourself, namely the parts of yourself you may not like. It can be incredibly challenging, but it's facilitating major growth for both of you. You are so connected at a soul level, you feel things deeper together 
which often makes for more intensity and passion. It creates a very strong bond between the two of you. You may even feel each other's emotions or symptoms. It is a rare connection and not everybody has one. Twin flame can become toxic. If we don't have self-love and awareness, they can become even more painful. Twin flames have an instant, instinctive, and undeniably intense bond, as well as emotional, mental and spiritual connection. There is an undeniable, overwhelming feeling that they have been brought together as part of a higher calling. The early stages of twin flame unions may be filled with turmoil, challenges, and pain as the two work to merge and balance their energies. A twin flame connection may experience an exchange of energy and in some cases are energetic mirror opposites of each other. The vulnerability needed for such a connection takes courage since hidden emotions or unhealed wounds may come to light before real healing can begin. Using the term twin flame means a non-exclusive partner who vibrates near or at the same spiritual frequency. Twin Flame Ascension and the Dimensions 3D, 4D and 5D The Twin Flame Union and the levels their energy is connected in the ascension process. Let's find out. When going through the process of spiritual awakening, sooner or later, we are confronted with the fact that there seem to be more dimensions than the one reality we are living in and that we know so well. We start questioning our life. The higher dimensional energies are calling us. We start resonating with them and go on our quest to find out more about who we truly are. We learn about universal energies and different frequencies and what ascension truly means. An energetic shift from 3D to 5D by raising our frequencies to a much higher level and transmuting low frequencies of fear into unconditional love up to a point where no fear is left. The third dimension is all about material, accumulating material, and living in fear of losing it again. We define ourselves on this plane by what we possess and what we do for a living. We believe we need someone else to make us happy and whole. We experience joy in very rare occasions in situations of breathtaking beauty be it in nature. Energetically, the third dimension is a place of very low vibration and enhances the illusion of separation, duality and free will. Our higher self is not integrated into the physical body because it cannot handle the density and low frequency. It is connected with us through our spiritual body, but when our chakras are blocked, it hardly can get through to us. As long as the ego mind is in the lead, and our heart is closed, the connection to our soul is blocked most of the time. The communication with our higher self, and the higher realms, can only be felt, not understood with the rational mind. The ego mind, is not able to process this amount of energy. The third dimension allows us to experience light and darkness, good and bad, joy and despair, better and worse. We have the choice to act as saints or demons. That is actually the only choice we have on this plane, love or fear, light or darkness, The fourth dimension. The magical dream world. Called astral plane, it is a dimension that is less dense and much more fluid. Duality and the ego and thus fear is able to exist also here. 
we usually visit this plane naturally, during the night. Here, in our dream states, anything is possible. We can travel into the past, and into the future. Experienced astral travelers, are able to access this plane also during the day. This can become so real, that they are actually experiencing out-of-body adventures. On this plane, it is also possible, to tap into the collective consciousness, and learn more from there. The astral realm, is a place where light, and darkness come into conflict easily. The fifth dimension. The plane of light. The fifth dimension, is the last one of pure light, and unconditional love. This is the dimension, beyond linear time, that means that many different timelines, realities are available to access. There is no pain, fear. It is an intense energetic flow of unconditional love, and everything feels light, and at ease. We receive information directly from spirit, and telepathy, teleportation, and telekinesis become possible. The fifth dimension, is the dimension of deep trust, and an inner knowing, that everything is happening perfectly. We know that there is no danger, so we know that there is no need for protection. We know, that our light shines so bright, that it absorbs the darkness automatically. The twin flame journey, is complicated for many reasons. For one, you share deep feelings for one another, but can't always communicate them in the 3D, or physical dimension. Twin flame, 5D communication, is both spiritual, and energetic form of communication. You feel like, you talk to them in your mind, you see them in your dreams, and you feel the energetic share, and merging, which creates an internal communication with your twin flame, because of the soul intimacy. The 3D state of being in, is where your ego resides, based of fear, guilt, shame, old conditioning, trauma, past life baggage. The whole point of this particular soul contract, is to balance your karma, and attain a fast flow of ascension process. You need to balance your karma, in order to ascend into their light body. Both type of dynamics, then are meant to dive deep into their healing, as the ascension process begins between the pair. Many old forgotten, and known buried traumas, are released, from either past, or from this lifetime, through your twin flames mirror effect. The connection in the 5D consciousness, becomes even stronger. It's your biggest proof of your energetic bond, and telepathy. If you are thinking about them, guaranteed that they are in the same frequency. The souls, have an intense energetic bond like nothing other. If you find yourself in conversation with them often, in their absence in physical, Know that this is part of your telepathic communication with them. Some days, you will feel an intense connection with them, almost as if they are physically around you, but they are not. You will have a clear sense of knowing, that this is not you, but them. You are aware of their energy, and are able to sense them ever so strongly. They come to you in your dreams, for messages, and insights. Most twin flames, at some stage of their connection, will dream of their twin flame, where they revealed, or conveyed very specific messages. Pay attention to those, as it will hold some significance, to your journey, and connection dynamics. You can also feel them, sexually, as if you are dealing with them in physical reality. If you see their look-alike everywhere, you name it, if you are seeing their look-alike everywhere, chances are, the universe, is confirming, that they are also thinking of you. When you see their names, 
or initials everywhere, their city, it confirms your connection. It can also confirms, that if you sense about something happened in his, hers life, you can't be wrong. They are in constant contact with you, is via signs, and sinks. Their higher self, will be orchestrating this. It is their form of validating you, about the connection, and as well as showing you, what your next step forward, is in your spiritual evolution. Only you, will know intuitively, what their specific messages mean to you. Twin flame incarnations, currently, are very rare. Most souls twin, is not incarnated currently, but working, and connected with them from the 5D plane. Astral Plane Meaning The Astral Plane, also called the Astral Realm, or the Astral World, is a plane of existence postulated by Classical, Medieval, Oriental, and Esoteric philosophies, and Mystery Religions. It is the world of the celestial spheres, crossed by the soul in its astral body, on the way to being born, and after death, and is generally believed to be populated by angels, spirits, or other immaterial beings. Another view holds, that the astral plane, or world, rather than being some kind of boundary area, crossed by the soul, is the entirety of spirit existence, or spirit worlds to which those, who die on earth go, and where they live out their non-physical lives. The astral plane, can be visited consciously through astral projection, meditation, mantra, near-death experience, lucid dreaming, or other means. The first stage in development, is mastery of the physical body, and its care and attention, which pertains, not only to the physical body, but also to its double in the astral. The first three subdivisions of the instinctive mind, are passions, desires, and lusts. The second stage, is the intellect, otherwise known as the sharpening of the mind. Someone operating largely out of the instinctive mind, would have only a glimmering of intellect. In the higher regions of the desire world, thoughts take a definite form, and color perceptible to all. All is light, and there is but one long day. The soul, is faced with an opportunity to learn a significant life lesson, and elevate that soul's position on the astral plane, as well as improves the quality of its next life. The cumulative lifetime karmic effect, of struggling with that illness might easily place the person, at the time of his, or her death, on a higher astral plane, than someone who has lived a life free of any disability. Chinese Taoism, involves the use of breathing techniques, to enter a meditative state, and to modify the body's energy state, in order to enter an astral plane. Past life, meaning. What are past lives? 
Why are they important? Past lives are about the soul circling on its voyage to discover the powerful truth of who we are, intending to become our best self and grow in the light. We manifest our issues and what we need to learn. From lifetime to lifetime, soul memories and experiences are stored within our cells and DNA. We forget our divine heritage, the issues, and fears. We want to transform, and our desires to ascend. Three-dimensional reality, gets us once again. You only get a glimpse, that you are in a past life, when you begin to experience familiar pain, and suffering. Your inner soul, gets a flash, that you have met these issues, problems, patterns, and characters. It hurts. Then, you want to run. But, this is the time to pause, take note, be brave, and face the challenge. You know, you are in past life territory, when you have tried to find answers, from a psychological perspective, and the suffering remains. Or if you have a fixation, a phobia. Maybe, you have a nightmare that haunts, or weird feelings, that cannot be explained. When things don't make sense, you have tried everything, and it is all so strange. This is when, you need the deeper radar of past life wisdom, to explain the unexplainable. It is important, that you get past life recognition, and answers on a deeper level. Exploring past lives, helps us to solve the riddle of the soul, and soul wounds. You can spin in a never-ending circle, and meet the same characters, themes, again and again. What matters in this healing modality is, the karmic transition point in the story, that comes around again, to highlight, what you can heal, change, or make a new choice. Old souls, who have had many past lives, advance in their spirituality, and care about higher things, and less about ego, and possessions. You can be practical, real, and investigate your life for themes, characters, and patterns that repeat, again and again. Your circumstances, and issues, contain clues. You can track things, that feel dramatic and intense. You can look for what is weird, strange, and not normal. What places in the world do you feel drawn to? Do you have cities you want to visit, and some you never want to visit? Why? Have you ever traveled to a place, that felt weirdly familiar? Do you feel at home in a certain country? What movie eras do you gravitate to? What style of costumes do you like? What are you resisting again and again? What are the same themes that get to you in personal matters and other? What do you regret? Do you have a feeling that you are being punished for something? What strange dreams keep reoccurring? What are you suffering? What does not make sense? What seems weird and irrational? What do you know deep in your heart to be true about your mission, life purpose, and destiny? There are some other ways, to access past lives. Dreams, are sacred messages, and agents that you can trust. When we sleep, we leave the distractions of the third dimensional world, and access higher realms. Dreams, carry symbols and divine information, that lead to real answers, and clues about past lives, blocks, and issues that must be faced in your soul work. You can also meditate. Get into a relaxed alpha, and theta state. Allow the body and mind, to relax, and let the stream of consciousness drift you, to another time and place. The most popular, is past life regression exercise. Relax, and call in your angels, and guides.
call up a bridge into your energy field, and meet a loved one of other dimensional being, to travel with you beyond time, and space. Or go down a flight of stairs, and enter a room, where you meet your past life. It may take some time to access it, because for some people, the past life regression is not an easy exercise. Our soul, holds energetic memories from different times and realities. But we experience amnesia, when we are born into a new body. In the same way, that we can't remember things from, when we were young children, we also don't remember things from our past lives. We're blocked from those memories, so that they don't take our attention away, from the path, that we need to walk, and the lessons, that we need to learn in this lifetime. If you have obscure memories, is maybe a sign. Because, meeting someone, who activates deep soul recognition from a past life, is an intense, and unique experience, that cannot be mistaken, for anything other, than an eternal bond. You have no idea, how or why, but you begin to remember unclear moments, that manifest as random visions, flashbacks, dreams, and feelings, not experienced in this lifetime with this person. The encounter, and interactions conjure up, an unexplainable well of deep emotions, within you. You can also feel lost, and found all at the same time. You can also sense a shift within, revealing parts of yourself, you didn't know existed. The souls with whom we have the deepest connection, and with whom we have chosen to learn, and grow with, are the ones, who are there to teach us the most profound lessons. And sometimes, these lessons are not easy. Just, because you have known one another in a past life, does not mean it will all be love, and happy endings in this one. These challenges, can manifest as either positive or negative, and the bigger the contradictions and, or obstacles, the more you will have to grow on a soul level, in order to meet, and understand the higher meaning. This characteristic, is one of the greatest signs, that you've met a profound soul connection from a past life. This person, will push you to seek new meaning, and discover personal uncharted territory, just by showing up in your life. Your mind and heart, blows wide open to the possibilities. You begin to see everything differently. You begin to distinguish, between real, and illusionary realities. You can see right through them, and them through you. You discover in yourself, a strength that you never knew existed. You might feel as, if your very survival depends on, this person remaining in your life, in a certain way. You begin to merge with your subconscious self, which does not differentiate between past, present and future. You may feel, that earth is not your true home. You yearn to go home. You now, have a profound sense of wisdom, and an unusual capacity, to see the deeper meaning in life's events. Trust your intuition, and be mindful of how you feel. You can also, experience something is different. We can see any other scenario. Let's take an example. You're listening to some music, and a few days later, you start to feel something is, both unclear, 
and very weird. You don't know what it is yet. Some songs, you've listened, to awaken memories from somewhere. And now, you have questions. Why? You sent messages, to someone for a little while, on social media, and shortly after, you started to dream about this person, that you don't know in real life. That is strange, isn't it? These weird feelings, that you started to feel before, became very vivid. It's like gets under your skin, and lives inside you. Again, why? Well, what you sense, is just memories of a different person. You, unknowingly created, a energetic connection with this person, and became cords of attachment. The reason why, you can sense, significant memories of this person, how was his, hers life in the past. It is possible, you had a past life together, and the reason why too, you have cords of attachment, even if you don't know him or her. This sort of special link, can happen in different ways. If, what you sense is very, really vivid, your connection with this person, is into fifth dimension. Consult the good, real psychic, is recommend, in order to find out more, about all that. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope, you learned more, or maybe, that all of this helped you.